Hello everyone. I'm Jun. I'm presenting our work Beyond Fixed Grid: Learning Geometric Image Representation with Deformable Grid. This is a joint work with Zan, Jinchen, and Sanya. In modern computer vision, images are typically processed in a fixed and uniform grid in deep convolutional neural network. The feature maps are always processed in a fixed kernel grid, such as 3x3 or 5x5. In this paper, we argue for more efficient representation using deformable grids. By operating on a fixed grid, pixels with different RGB colors or semantics are processed together. And since the grid edge is not aligned with actual image boundaries, the geometric representation is very close. Therefore, we need high-resolution grids to represent images accurately, which makes memory and computation expensive. However, if we are operating on a deformed grid whose edges align with image boundaries, pixels with similar RGB colors or semantics can be processed together. And since the grid edge is aligned with image boundaries, the geometric representation thus captures fine details in the image. Therefore, we only need a low-resolution grid to represent high-resolution image, which brings the efficiency for memory and computation. In this paper, we present deformable grid, a neural network module that represents an image with a 2D grid, whose edges align with image boundaries. We argue that, by operating on the deformable grid, image understanding can be more efficient and effective than operating on fixed grids. Our deformable grid is a plug-and-play module that can be applied at multiple levels of image understanding, and we showcase three examples in our work. It can be applied to the input level by doing down sampling inside the grid, or the output level by reasoning object boundaries with deformed grid. The grid itself is also an unsupervised version of image partitioning. We will first talk about how to deform the grid, and later discuss applications in detail. To deform the grid, we parameterize the initial grid as a uniform and regular 2D triangles on top of the image. We choose this one as the initial topology for its flexibility to represent arbitrary edge orientations. We now discuss our deformable grid module and how we train it. In our approach, we utilize a neural network with GCN to predict the deformation for each vertex. Let H denote the network, which is parameterized by theta. The network takes in the position of vertex in the initial and uniform grid and predicts its new position in the deformed grid. But how we train the network? Our main intuition is that when the grid edge is aligned with image boundaries, the variance of features of pixels inside each grid will be minimized. Like in this case, the variance of RGB colors is minimized for each grid cell. Therefore, our main loss to train the network H is to minimize the variance of the features inside the grid, such as in this equation. Fi represents the feature vector of pixel i. It can be RGB values. And when we have supervision, such as segmentation mask, we can append one whole vector to RGB values. And f hat is a mean feature vector of grid cell k. Sk here denotes the set of pixels that are inside grid cell k. However, this variance function is not differentiable with respect to vertex positions, and thus cannot be easily plugged into deep neural networks. Our solution is that we can softly assign each pixel to every grid with one probability, the pi to k here, and this probability assignment is a differentiable function of vertex positions. The differentiable function we choose to use is assigned distance from the pixel's positions to the grid combined with softmax. The intuition behind is that if the pixel is inside of one grid or close to one grid, then the probability will be close to 1, such as p1 to k here. And if the pixel is outside of the grid or far away from the grid, the probability will be close to 0, such as p2 to k here. In this way, we can backpropagate the gradient into vertex position analytically. We also differentially reconstruct the original image using the derived probability by summing over all grid cells with pi to k and compare it with the original feature vector using L1 loss. The overall loss function is a weighted sum of previous two terms plus two localizations to avoid self-intersections and encourage the smoothness. 
For downstream tasks, we apply our deformable grid to different levels of image processing, to the input level for learnable down sampling, to the output level for object annotation, and treat it as a standalone module for unsupervised image partitioning. To apply at the input level, we replace the pooling on the fixed grid with deformed grid. Specifically, instead of pooling on 3x3 kernel, we're pooling on the deformed grid cells. And since the topology remains fixed and regular, the downsampled image features can be further processed with convolutional neural network for downstream tasks. By pooling on the deformed grid, more geometric details can be preserved and thus image processing with CM is more efficient and effective. The overall training loss is a combination of deformation loss we discussed before with the loss in downstream tasks. The network is trained end-to-end -end with these two loss functions. We experiment on the semantic segmentation for Cityscape's benchmark, and we obtain significant improvements over the baselines. We can also apply our deformable grid at the output level for object annotation to read the image boundaries with either pixelized labeling or boundary-based methods. For pixelized labeling, instead of predicting pixelized label, we predict the label for every grid cell. And since the pixels that are inside the grid are have the similar colors or semantics, predicting the label for every grid cell is more efficient and can pose localizations to the prediction. The loss function to train the network is a combination of deformation loss and the segmentation loss, which is a cross entropy for gridwise prediction. For boundary based labeling, we are aiming to find a close contour in the deformed grid. We first utilize curve GCN to have the initial prediction, and further snap the predicted curve to the grid edge by searching the minimal energy path. In this approach, the prediction aligns better with image boundaries as it explicitly reasons the boundary-aligned grid, and thus can handle objects with more complex boundaries. The overall loss is a combination of deformation loss, the loss from curve TCM, and the loss to predict energy we use for searching. As before, all the network here is trained end-to-end. -end. We experiment on the Cityscapes dataset. The network prediction not only improves the baseline, but also generates very well to cross-domain datasets especially for the grid deformation. Note that the network here is only trained on the cityscapes, but the inference is running on medical, rooftop, ADE, and kitty. Quantitatively, our deformal grid achieves much better performance than baseline, especially in terms of boundary F scores. Our deformal grid itself can be viewed as an unsupervised version of image partitioning. We can go further to cluster cells by using the affinity between them to reduce the number of grid cells. Note that, in our approach, the partitions are polygons by design. To evaluate the grid itself for unsupervised image partitioning, we perform superpixel segmentation on BSD500 datasets and comparing with both traditional methods and deep learning based methods. Our deformal grid aligns better with the edge. And quantitatively, we achieve higher boundary prediction than baselines. In conclusion, we propose deformal grid as a low dimensional geometric image representation for increased efficiency. By incorporating our grids at different levels of image processing with deep neural network, we could achieve superior performance than many baselines. If you are interested in our work, please look at our paper for more details. Thanks for your listening.